Hello everyone. So we have already covered about two topics from this management of special child that was mentally retarded and the childhood autism. So moving on towards the next special child that is the Down syndrome. So now we have studied about this Down syndrome since our 11th standard. So as we know, this is a genetic disorder in which there is trisomy of the chromosome number 21. The incidence of Down syndrome, it is 1 in 600 life births. Now what are the predisposing factors? So first is the advanced maternal age. That means if the mother's age is about 35, the chances of Down syndrome, they are more. Then next is the uterine and the placental abnormalities. And there are this chromosomal aberration. So these all are the clinical features for the Down syndrome. Now as we have already studied and we are studying about this Down syndrome since long time. So I'm not going to cover about this clinical feature in this particular video as we are focusing more onto the oral manifestation and the dental management of this. Now, what are the oral manifestation of Down syndrome? So first is mouth. So the mouth, it is small drooping mouth and usually there is open mouth posture. The tongue, it is protrusive and it is a fissured tongue. The circumvallate papilla, they are usually enlarged and the filiform papilla, they are absent and the size of the tongue, it is large, that is macroglossia. Lips, they are thick, dry and they are fissured. Occlusion, so the most commonly seen malocclusion is you will see class 3 in Down syndrome and there is anterior open bite and cross bite and the size of maxilla, it is small. Then the palate, it often appears high with horizontal palatal shelf, it is known as omega palate and there is bifid uvula and the chances of cliff, lip and palate, it is more in the cases of Down syndrome. The eruption of teeth, it is retarded and there is early shedding of the deciduous teeth. In teeth, now you'll see there is hypodontia, that means there are missing teeth. So especially the third molars and maxillary lateral incisors, they are, they are the missing teeth in the Down syndrome. And there is microdontia, that means the size of the teeth, it is small. There is hypocalcification of the teeth and there are this hypoplastic defects. And usually it is said that there are low incidence of caries in the cases of Down syndrome patients. Now the most important part that is the dental management. The first is adequate prophylaxis. It is needed in the case of Down syndrome as there are higher chances of transient bacteremia. And so these children of Down syndrome, they require antibiotic prophylaxis. Now the next is there are increased chances or increased incidence of leukemia and acute and chronic infection of the upper respiratory tract. And this it can alter the treatment, dental treatment. So there are higher incidence of leukemia and upper respiratory tract infection in the case of Down syndrome. Then usually the children, they are affectionate and they are usually cooperative. Then there is nitrous oxide. It is usually used. So nitrous oxide sedation, it is usually used in mildly apprehensive. So in mild uncooperative patient. Then the preventive procedures along with the chlorhexidine mouthwash, it is beneficial. So you are using 0.2% chlorhexidine gluconate it is usually recommended to reduce the oral bacterial count. So you are using this preventive procedure to reduce the bacterial count. The next is the pulp treatment. It is usually contraindicated in the deciduous teeth in the patient with cardiac problem. Now, if the patient of Down syndrome, they also have some cardiac problem. So in that, the pulp treatment, it is contraindicated. So the dental disease, it can seriously complicate their medical management. So it is contraindicated due to the possibility of the subsequent chronic bacteremia. The next is the orthodontic management of the malocclusion in the children with Down syndrome. It is problematic. Now as we have seen, so the Down syndrome, they will usually have this class 3 malocclusion. They will have open bites, but the, so the treatment, so the orthodontic treatment, it is problematic. So the orthodontic treatment in the patients with Down syndrome, it should be multidisciplinary. And it is often challenging for the dentist because the cooperation, it might be difficult to achieve due to the presence of mental retardation. Now, as orthodontic treatment, it is not a single visit treatment. And you need to call the patient again and again. And because of that, the patient, they can become uncooperative at some, at some times. So that means the orthodontic management of child with Down syndrome, it is a problematic thing. Next is general anesthesia. It is frequently employed to facilitate treatment. So if the patient, it is like they are very uncooperative. So in that case, you need to take the patient under general anesthesia. Then all the restorative treatment, it is indicated in the case of Down syndrome, but attention to the presence of erosion and the developmental defect. As we have seen, there is hypocalcification and hypoplastic changes. So in that case, you need to like pay more attention towards the developmental defect of the dentine and towards the erosion in the cases of Down syndrome. 
and you are usually doing all the restorative treatment in them but as we have seen we are not doing pulp treatment in the cases of cardiac problem then in the periodontal disease optimal oral hygiene routine review and routine prophylaxis is indicated so we are doing like the ment oral hygiene it should be maintained properly then you are reviewing the patient on routine basis so that there are no like more chance so there are no complications which you will see then next is the, there should be like routine prophylaxis which is done in the cases of down syndrome that adequate analgesia it should be prescribed to keep the patient comfortable as they may not able to express pain or discomfort due to the due to their learning disability so you should give the patient so you should keep the patient under analgesia for some days like we are obviously doing for every patient but in this case we are doing it like without fail because the children with down syndrome they cannot express their pain or discomfort due to that learning disability and hence there should be adequate analgesia which should be prescribed to the down syndrome patient and you have to work at a slower pace in the cases of down syndrome this was all about the down syndrome like how you are going to manage it and like this only i'm going to cover more four topics from the special child which are the epilepsy then cerebral palsy visual impairment and deafness so in that also i'm going to cover or i'm going to focus more on to the oral manifestation and how you are going to manage the patient like the dental management for them so this was all about it thank you so much